Of all the national flags in the world, ours alone is subject to change. So now that two new stars have been added to Old Glory, would you tell the story of the changes that have been made in our flag since our earliest days? And it's signed, G.M. Davis, Burlingame, California. Well, Mr. Davis, we're indebted to the Detra Flag Company of Oaks, Pennsylvania for pictures that help tell our story. Now, some think it goes back a thousand years when marauding Norsemen brought their standard to this continent. The Raven Flag of the Viking. But the history of our own flag begins with America's fight for freedom. Each colony with its own emblem, such as the pine tree flag, symbolizing the hardiness of the New England people. To this, they added a gentle motto, quite in contrast to the battle cry of the South. Don't tread on me. The Gadsden flag of South Carolina, a coiled rattler is no idle threat. Two strangely contrasting flags that became one as North and South joined in a common cause. Over Cambridge, General Washington raised the Grand Union flag. British colors still in the canton, it was only half American. And so on June 14, 1777, Continental Congress passed this memorable resolution. Resolved that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, and the Union be 13 stars. From those simple words, Francis Hopkinson perfected the design. And a favorite legend goes that our first official flag was made here in the home of Betsy Ross, the needlewoman said to have fashioned it under instructions from George Washington himself. He explained its significance in these words. We take the star from the heaven, the red from the mother country, separating it by white stripes, thus showing that we've separated from her, and the red stripes shall go down to posterity, representing victory. Now, a new symbol of inspiration for the Continental Army until their final day of victory. The flag of England lowered, the growth of a new nation begun. In 1791, Vermont. In 1792, Kentucky. Over them, the emblem of a freedom-loving people. The plan was that with each new state, a star and a stripe would be added. So now with 15 states, there were 15 stars and 15 stripes. This, the immortal Star Spangled Banner. Under baptism of fire in the War of 1812. As bombs burst in the air through the long night, the author of the national anthem watched with fear and hope. When morning came, our flag was still there. A nation lived on. Soon more states, Louisiana, Indiana, Mississippi, Illinois, more and more stripes, a flag out of all proportions, until 1818. Resolved that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes, alternate red and white, and that the Union be 20 stars. In 1819, Florida, still another star. 1823, the Monroe Doctrine, and the nation came of age. The era of expansion went on. 1836, Texas declared its independence, soon to join the Union. 1846, then Oregon, New Mexico, and California territories were added. Memorable dates, each one to leave its mark on our flag and its destiny. Until in 1912, our nation boasted 48 states, our flag, 48 stars. And this was the flag that men from every state carried with pride and dignity throughout the world. A dramatic symbol of a nation's ideals and its faith in peace and in war. reach its greatest hour over the shell-scarred rocks of Iwo Jima. Then, with the coming of peace, old glory was again subject to progress and change. With the statehood of Alaska, a new dynamic star comes to join the field of blue. And old glory becomes a flag of 49 stars arranged in seven rows of seven. And finally, with the welcoming of Hawaii, our flag of 50 stars product of an evolution which parallels the growth of our nation from a few struggling colonies in the wilderness to the power it is today. The story of Old Glory is truly a fascinating one. Mr. Davis, we're glad you asked for it.